Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you've come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. It's very nice to meet you. Likewise, I hope... These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. The reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But, either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. That may be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, so we must show them the proper respect. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Hotari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? She's not part She can of speak for herself, can she? Then let her. Now then, one should know their place. What you might be somewhere else is not what you are here. Which is standing before a queen. 
and a queen deserves respect. A bow is not too much to ask. Is Hotari Prime part of the Hotari system? My name is Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. I prefer to be called by my name, not my species. Then I suppose that makes us even. Commander Rydek. You are Kobliard. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Kobliard is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliard suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become the oppressor. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case, was it? No. It was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. As Ambassador Spock has said, We've come seeking a peaceful resolution to this conflict, and have no interest in your dilithium. I'm not nearly as naive as you must think. The Federation has done business with the Illidians for decades, which makes me question your motives. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone. Especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before Dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. Don't tell me. Who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? It can only be one or the other, not both. If there can only be one, then it would be in the best interest of all involved if the Illidians resumed operation of the mines. And that is why we should not trust our fate to the Federation. She speaks sense. You do well to listen to her. And you do well to hold your tongue. We will take back our mines by any means necessary. Then you will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives.
I would agree, Ambassador Spa. Captain Solano was proud of Jera's diplomatic acumen when the Hoteri Queen put her on the spot in the Queen's chamber. Ambassador Spock admired Jera's deft diplomacy under pressure when she was being questioned by the Hoteri Queen. Ed Siller couldn't help but admire Carter's sense of humor as a way of appreciating her anger over his going first on the home. Miranda loved Carter's charming personality when they were saying goodbye in the docking bay. Lieutenant Commander Chuvuk approved of Carter's eagerness to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle. Ambassador Spock was not really impressed by Carter's use of the tractor beam to rescue his shuttle, and he was struck by Carter's modesty and work ethic. I think this is best left to those of us with more experience in diplomatic matters. Spock and I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Commander, after hearing so much about the Federation's sense of fairness and justice, I was surprised that you sided with the Elidians. In all honesty, I expected more, especially from someone like you. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. On the Elidians' terms, apparently. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. Did you have help from someone else? Hotari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, they're Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Hmm. Soothing.
Commander Rydek, I have to admit, I was surprised when you said the Illidium should control the dilithium trade. I was under the assumption the Federation was neutral, but maybe I was wrong. I can assure you, we aren't on anyone's side. We are, and will remain, completely neutral. You have my word. I hope that's true. For all of our sakes. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. That it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Because of what happened in the mines. Is it Galvin they're afraid of? Mm, it's entirely possible. But I don't know for sure. Whatever Galvin is doing in those mines is turning everything upside down. But no one knows exactly what's happening. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. Why would they do that? I don't know. But that's what concerns me. Whatever they're hiding, it can't be good. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I don't mean to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured it might be useful if I offered another perspective. Of course. I have to say, I fully expected you to side with the Hotari. But obviously the Federation wants a steady supply of dilithium. Something only we can offer. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. Left to the Hotari, it would be nothing short of a disaster. We're not on either side. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major solid, Arminta. Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. 
Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Illidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chovak. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clearer picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. 